أعوذ سميع الله لنا سميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا ربهم يعدلون فأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله لا نبي بعده صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الجليل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تركت فيكم أمرين ما إن تمسكتم بهما لن تضلوا أبدا كتاب الله وسنتي أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام الحمد لله tonight we are going to begin our series of lectures or درس on social matters in al-Islam. But tonight is just about the introduction. I'm going to introduce this subject. What does it mean to be social matters? We call that in Arabic language, al-umur al Social issues or social subject or social matters in the deen in al-Islam. Before coming to this particular issue, I would like to, first of all to remind ourselves to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certainly for His blessings that Alhamdulillah we just completed the month of Ramadan a few days back. Once again we hope that and we pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have blessed our ibadat and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cover us with His mercy all the times, forgive our sins and our shortcomings. And more importantly, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us on the guidance, on the sirat al-mustaqim, so that they can continue walk on the true path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the day that we are going to meet Him, inshaAllah ta'ala. The first point I would like to underline here tonight is the importance of knowledge in Al-Islam. Since we are going to talk about issues in the religion, in other words, we are going to learn a lot of things about this deen. And it is very important to understand the position of ilm, knowledge in Al-Islam, so that we can have courage and motivation to learn more. Because many Muslims are not aware that knowledge in Islam is fundamentally important. That we cannot basically practice the religion, we cannot follow the guidance without the knowledge. Because everything else is built on knowledge in Islam. Every single aspect of Islamic teaching is built on ilm, knowledge. Nothing is blindness here. We don't consider ourselves believe blindly. And we don't consider ourselves worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also just blindly or following people around. Or we follow the society where we live in. We are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have the knowledge about it. And therefore, if you go back to the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find quite a lot of references talking about the importance of knowledge. In fact, the most repeated word mentioned in the Holy Quran after the word Allah himself is the word which is related to, to the mind, to the brain. When Allah says, أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ أَفَلَا تَتَدَبَّرُونَ أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ all this is concerning our brain, knowledge, talking about thinking. 
This is or these are the largest or the most repeated words mentioned in the Quran after the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important to take this into our consideration very seriously. We remember that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed down the Holy Quran to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began that by a commandment, a special order. Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord, the one who created. In other words, that the Holy Quran came down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order for the people to understand the Creator. Bismi rabbik. Read in the name. And in the name mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Read in the name of Allah. Reading what? At the time there was no letters to read. To read. The Quran yet was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to read. Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord, the one who created it. In other words, that nothing that we can achieve in this deen without knowledge. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then explained that when he says, Man arada dunya fa'alayhi bil ilm. Wa man arada al akhirah fa'alayhi bil ilm. Wa man arada huma fa'alayhi bil ilm. A person who does want this dunya, if you want this dunya, then you have to gain knowledge. You have to have knowledge about it. You want to succeed in your business, you have to have knowledge of business. You want to succeed in your engineering, you have to have a, a good knowledge about engineering. You want to succeed in pharma pharmaceutical field, that you have to have knowledge of pharmacy, and so on and so forth. Man arada dunya, fa'alihi bil Whoever wants this dunya, that you have to have knowledge. Woman arad al akhira, and whoever wants an akhira, the day of judging happiness in the life after death, فعليه بالعلم, then should he or she require knowledge. Woman arad huma, and whoever wants both, you want happiness here in this dunya, and in the next, فعليه بالعلم, that you have to have knowledge. So all are connected to knowledge. Even when we come back to our iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra, fa'lam annahu la ilaha illa huwa wa staghfir li dhambik. You talk about la ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa huwa. There is no God worthy of worship but Allah. Allah begins by saying, fa'lam, that you have to have knowledge. Know that there is no God worthy of worship. In other words, to come to that conclusion, that there is no God worthy of worship, requires knowledge. It is not only because I've heard people saying it. I listen to the, to the people around me saying that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, so I, I believe so. There is no such in Islam. We are not just imitating the people. We are believing in Allah because we know that He is our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do believe that there is only one God because we know it. Knowledge. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ وَاسْتَغْفِرِ لِذَنْبِ Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu then said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمَةٍ And because the importance of that knowledge, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa obligated the Muslims, male or female, both. There is no exception here. طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ Seeking knowledge, فَرِيضَةٌ is obligatory عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ On each Muslim, certainly male and female, man and woman, that is it. Faridah. And it's obligation. And then he says, min al Seek knowledge from the cradle to the graveyard. In other words, that as long as we are alive, we must seek knowledge. And a lot of hadith, a lot of ayat in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the importance of knowledge in Islam. And we don't have to mention all these ayat because we know that this is the second repeated words mentioned in the Quran. And for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then raised the degrees of those who believe and knowledgeable. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَةٍ Allah raised the degrees, the darajah, the honor 
the dignity, the respect, the position of the people of faith and knowledge. People of faith and knowledge. Looks like faith and knowledge must be connected. Those who have faith, inshallah, have knowledge. And hopefully, those who have knowledge must have faith because knowledge should bring us into our strong belief and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The history of nations, brothers and sisters, and the history of civilizations only develop by knowledge. We have seen this in terms of dunya life, al hayat dunyawiyya our worldly life, coming to this life in this dunya. We see how Japan had advanced, how Korea is advancing, how Western people, nations advance, how even the United States advanced in technology and science. And the reason is simply because of knowledge. So we cannot keep aside the knowledge in order for us to be respected and honored and dignified. The daraja in the sight of Allah and in the sight of humans requires knowledge. In order for this ummah to be respected, this ummah must be knowledgeable as the past ummah. If you study the history of science, in the history of humanity, you will find that nations cannot forget the role of the Muslims in the past, that we have laid down the foundation of scientific advancement. Who doesn't know the father of math? Who doesn't know the father of medicine in the history? Who doesn't know the father of chemistry in the history? Who doesn't know the first sociology, Ibn Khaldun, for example, and others? If you just, if just the people are honest about the, the history, they will acknowledge that all scientific fields have been laid down its foundation by the Muslims. And that's why, brothers and sisters, there is no other way for us Muslims to advance except to follow that tradition, the tradition of being, acquiring knowledge, the tradition of learning, because that is the nature of humanity, to know. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the creation of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly say, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the names of everything. What does it mean teaching the names? What does it mean Allah is teaching the names of everything to Adam or all things to Adam? It means Allah prepare Adam to know. There is a curiosity within our self or our life to know. And that's why our minds cannot stop. We always think and think and think. And that's what Islam has come to fulfill. Islam had come to advance our thinking. Islam has come to open our mind and our horizon. Iqra is not only reading the letters, but more importantly, it's about open up. Open our horizon, our understanding, so we can easily know what is going on in the world today. And how about the next life? So brothers and sisters, it's very important to acquire knowledge. Now, when you come to the... To the legal perspective of knowledge. Is it an obligation that every Muslim must seek knowledge? Yes, there is no doubt about that. But to specialize on the deen, so seeking knowledge is fardu'ain, that every single Muslim must seek knowledge of Islam. It doesn't mean that you have to become a scholar. Because scholarly, scholarship means specialization. To become a professor, to become a, a teacher, to become a Molana or Malwi. That is specialization. That you have, you know, uh, specialize on it. But as a general sense, every single Muslim must learn. You know, similarly when you say, in order for us to understand our health, that we have to have a basic knowledge about health. What type of food that we eat. What type of, you know drink that should we drink, what type of things that we have to do in order for us to be healthy, 
You have to have a basic knowledge about health in order to be healthy. And in order for us to be Muslim, we have to have a basic knowledge about Islam. How it is possible that someone to consider themselves a Muslim but he doesn't know at all about the religion. So seeking knowledge is a fardu'ain on every single Muslim. And that's why the Prophet say, Utlub. Or I say, Talab al farida ala kulli. When he say ala kulli, on each, on every, means fardu'ain. But to specialize, to become a teacher, to become an imam, to become a sheikh, to become a mulana, it is not an, an individual obligation. It's not a fardu'ain. It is fardu kifayah. And that's why in, in one community, if you have an imam, you have a sheikh, alhamdulillah, it's sufficient. But it doesn't mean that you just give everything, the responsibility to the imam. Because the imam cannot reach to every single community to, to, to teach. If the community members are coming to the imam, the imam is teaching them. But if the communities are not coming to learn, how is it possible for the imam to go to every single community to teach them? So there is an individual obligation for every Muslim to seek knowledge and to learn the deen. But to specialize, to become a, a specialized, it is fardu kifaya. So it is not necessarily that every Muslim become, to become Mawlana or Malwi, or to become a sheikh or imam. There must be someone, it's enough, it's sufficient. Now, brothers and sisters, when you explore further the Holy Quran, we'll find that the Holy Quran itself had already defined itself that we cannot, we cannot just interact with the Holy Quran without knowledge. And it says in the beginning of Surah Yusuf, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabian. That we have indeed revealed down the Holy Quran so that you may know, so that you have aql. Allah connected the Quran to the aql. That in, in order for us to understand the Holy Quran, we cannot just you know, undermine our, our aql, our brain. That is one of the most important blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us to have the brain, to be able to understand. So the way we interconnect with the Holy Quran is not only emotion that we read it and we have that emotional connection and sometimes we calculate the rewards MashaAllah Alif Lamin 30 rewards We calculated how many rewards so far? How many rewards so far? We are calculating but the question is do we understand it? Because the Holy Quran is a guidance. It's just like a, a map, you know, a map for us to walk, find the direction in our life. Holy Quran is the direction for us. And if we don't understand the direction, how it is possible then to follow the Holy Quran. So the Holy Quran says, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabian la'allakum ta'qilun. Knowledge is required in order for us to understand the Holy Quran. And sometimes we say that, you know, the Holy Quran is difficult to understand because it is not our language. Alhamdulillah, Allah has made it easy for us that the Holy Quran has been translated into almost every language of the world, national and local. You know, sometimes in one country, you have national language. The Holy Quran is available in that national language, but sometimes also even in a, in a local language. Let's say in Pakistan, you have Urdu, but they have Balochi maybe. You have maybe Pashto. Okay, and some of the countries, you know, you have local language of the Holy Quran. But not only that, even sometimes we need to challenge ourselves to understand the Holy Quran in Arabic language. Read the meaning of it and try to understand the meaning. Now we say we are not Arabs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better than us. When he decided that the Holy Quran is in Arabic language, Allah knows that the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day will be every kind of human beings. And if it says that Quran is only for the Arab to understand, then it is not fair. It's not fair. So Allah must have prepared the Holy Quran to be understood by every single Muslim, Arab and Ajam, Arab and non-Arabs. And in fact, the Holy Quran guarantees that. When Allah says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرُ this Qur'an has been made easy for everyone. The challenge is, is that anybody want to learn it? It's about political will. 
It is about our willingness. Do we want or not to understand it? So challenge ourselves to understand the Holy Quran. Challenge our stand and ourselves to know the Holy Quran. This knowledge, knowledge is very essential, my brothers and sisters. When we come to the Aqidah, as I mentioned the ayah before, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ that aqidah is not blindness. It is not only that we believe in Allah as the only God worthy of worship. And the reason is simply because that's what the people say. That's what the people believe. So I believe so. There is no such. In Al-Islam, it is about individual understanding and knowledge. Do you know? And therefore we have to think. We have to ex 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 exercise our mind. We have to think deeply. Not thinking Allah because we, we are not be able to think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But think about the creation of Allah and go beyond the creations. Think about the creation and don't think about the creator because you're going to fail to know him if you just force yourself to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is not limited and our knowledge is limited. So how it is possible to know the unlimited by the limited. I hope you understand me. Our mind is so limited. And Allah is not limited. And how it is possible that something, someone who is unlimited to be known by the unlimited. And therefore the Holy Quran had come to teach us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who Allah is. Read the Holy Quran. And if you want to know more about the signs of Allah, the Ayatullah, either in the Ayatullah in the Quran, the verses of Allah, or Ayatullah, the sign of Allah in the creations. So see the sun, and not only you see the sun and know about the sun, but know beyond the sun. If there is a sun, such a beautiful, such powerful, then who created it? The self-creating? Sun create itself? How is this possible? If sun create itself, then there is no guarantee that there will be no second sun tomorrow. And you can imagine if there is two suns, clash will happen. I don't know what will be happening in this life if there are two suns. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of them. This is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about aqidah. Our aqidah must be based on knowledge, not only on blindness. Not only to say that I believe because my friends believe in it. I believe because my father believes such. I believe it because my sheikh says such. I believe it because I know it. And knowledge is required. Coming to Al-Ibadat, Al-Ubudiyyat in Al-Islam, Al-Umurut Al-Ta'budiyyah, the rituals, things in Al-Islam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aqimus Salah, for example, then we know it is obligatory. But then how to do it? How to do it? Alhamdulillah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Salli. Pray as you have seen me pray. Now, how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did pray? We didn't see him praying. Go back to the Sunnah. Study the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu Now, studying the hadith sometimes, need explanation. Go to the book of Fiqhi. Ask the scholars. Go to the book of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Hanbali, and many other Imams in order to understand how the Prophet did pray. Because if we just say, okay, let's pray according to the Prophet pray, according to the way the Prophet ﷺ prayed, then we are going to, to dream. So to implement that, it means you have to go to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Al-umur al social matters that we are going to talk in these coming days, inshallah, also requires knowledge. You know, how to do business. How to involve in politics even in Islam. How to engage with your friends, or Muslims or non-Muslims. How to, a lot of things. When, when it comes to the issue of, you know, uh, social uh, issues, Islam is possibly the most practical religion to follow. Because Islam guides us truly, practically, on how to deal with every single thing, every single thing in our life. You know, from individual life, to our family life, to our collective life and public life, Islam has shown us what to do and how to do it. From how to enter into the bathroom, leaving the bathroom, 
beginning our food, ending our food, beginning our sleeping, waking up from our sleep. All these are being regulated in Islam. Nothing is left. So every single thing requires knowledge, even our social metal. You know, Islam talks in, in a very details about family matters in Islam. Read Surah, Surah An-Nisa, for example. You will find how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about from the beginning that we are looking for future spouse, what type of spouse they were looking, until the marriage, until how to preserve the marriage, until if anything happens, then we have to separate or divorce what to do, until when some, some, you know, some, some of the couples die, one of the two couples die, the husband is dying or the wife is dying, what to do, how about inheritance? Allah taught this in details. In other words that, you know, social matters have been regulated in details by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. So again, all these are in need of ilm, my brothers and, and sisters. Now, before coming to social matters, because we are going to talk on every Monday night, inshallah, my, my schedule is Monday to talk about social matters, and then Wednesday, I'm going to talk about selected surahs from the whole Quran, like Surah Al-Fatiha, then I'm going to select some other surahs from the Quran, inshallah, on Wednesday evening, every 9 to 10 o'clock. But for Monday, I'm going to talk about social matters. And so, I'm not going to begin tonight, um, the beginning of the subject, but I just wanted to begin tonight by talking about, I talk about the importance of knowledge. Now let me talk about the basic characteristic of Al-Islam. It is very uh, important to know because sometimes we are Muslims, we are Muslims, and we don't know what, what is the characteristic of our deen. You know, for our Christian friends, we see them going to the church once in a week, and that is the religiosity. Um, even though we see that, mashallah, some of our Christian friends are so nice, very kind. Uh, but in many ways, they consider that social kindness not necessarily related to the deen. But for Islam, we have to understand that every single aspect of human's life is connected to our deen. Because that is the way we give values to our life. We pray about Islam. We do fast, it's about Islam. We do hajj, it's about Islam. We do qiyamul layl, it's about Islam. But we sleep, also Islam. We do business, also Islam. We do, you know, engage in our friendship, you know, Islam. Going to, to, to visit a sick person in the hospital is about Islam. Being kind to your neighbors is about Islam. Everything else in Islam is related to, in, to the religion itself. Nothing is disconnected. Because that is the way we make our life valuable. There is a value in it. Without Al-Islam, we have to understand, and I'm sorry to mention this, without Al-Islam, our life will become, has no value. Yeah, you are living your life as humans. You eat, you marry, you sleep, you exercise, go into the market, and then you die. That's it. But if you understand that our life is related to the deen, that will give values to our life. And that's why it is very important to talk about social matters in Islam. Because in many ways, Muslims are so concerned about rituals. Alhamdulillah, it's very important. How to pray, we learn how to pray. How to raise our hand, how to place our hand on the chest, how to make ruku' sujud, you know, what to read. That's very important. Become closer to the sunnah in the way you pray. It's very important. But in many ways, Muslims remember all these rituals and forget about social matters in life. Looks like when it comes to the social life, it has nothing to do with Islam. And that's what creates what I call a double standard personality. What does it mean? So religious in the masjid. MashaAllah, so religious in the masjid. So good Muslim, so Islamic in the masjid. But the moment we leave the masjid, we're becoming some others. Some completely different individuals. Looks like it's nothing to do with Islam. Allah is kept in the masjid. Looks like... Allah is not the Lord of the market. He is not the Rabb of the street. Allah is not the Rabb of the house. Allah is not the Rabb of, 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 of the offices. It is wrong. 
And that's what the Quran says. Do you believe in some portion of the book? And you disbelieve in some portions of the book. We take some part of the book and we ignore some part of the book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to come to Al-Islam in a complete sense. And therefore, let me talk tonight about the, some basic characteristics of Al-Islam. Certainly, number one, we have to know that Al-Islam is a complete guidance for us to live our life. There are two here. Number one is complete, the word complete, and number two is guidance. Okay. Why I particularly underline two words? Number one, guidance. Because I wanted to, to emphasize and to underline that guidance is equivalent to the life itself. In other words, that there is no life without guidance. There is no life without guidance. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul, idha da'akum lima yuhayyikum. Or you who believe, fulfill. If Allah and His Messenger call you to your life, to things that give you life. Now what the things give you for life? Quran and Sunnah, Al-Islam, our Iman, our Islam. That's our life. So Allah wanted to say is that if you want to live your life, if you want to really to be alive, then you have to follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istajibu lillah wa rasul. This guidance, my brothers and sisters, is a complete, perfect, complete. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al yom akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today, I have perfected your deen. Al yom akmaltu alaykum ni'mati. And I have completed my ni'mah upon you, my favor upon you. And I'm, I am pleased to make Islam as your deen, as your way of life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the deen. We believe in that. The challenge is, do you know it? There's a lot of aspects of Islam that we don't know. And then we say that Islam is only about how to pray. Islam is only about how to do fast. Islam is about to, to do hajj, to all this bunch of rituals. But then we don't care when it comes to other aspect of life because either we don't know it or we don't care about it and therefore you know you see some brothers and sisters when they come to the food when they come to the food they don't care sometimes halal or haram you know we are living in New York for example and we take it for granted that we are Muslims uh, but then we don't care about what type of food that we consume. We enter into a restaurant and oftentimes we don't care about is it really safe? And I, I mean it's not about just dunya safe, safety. Are we safe here in the Akhirah when we eat that food? That is very important my brothers and sisters. So coming back again, Islam is a complete guidance that Allah has given us. From head to toe, in and out, Islam is a guidance for us. And we are going to give that examples in these coming days. How really Islam covers every single of human's life. Nothing is left. So you can imagine, you know, sometimes we think this. How it is possible that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu even care about entering into the bathroom, to the toilet? And then he say you have to, you know, enter into the toilet using your left foot and then recite the dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khaba'ith min al-khubuthi wal khaba'ith and then you get out with your right foot and then you read dua gufranak you know sometimes we think it is really very important for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was the king who was the president who was the Prophet of Allah but he even mentioned about this entering and getting out from the toilet that is just a representation that how islam perfect is nothing is left you want to sleep there's a guidance you wake up from your norm from your sleep guidance you want to eat guidance finish your food guidance what to eat and how to eat guidance 
That is the complete nature of Al Islam. So the first characteristic of Al Islam is complete guidance for us to live our life. This is number one. Number two, it is original. What does it mean original? Nothing is man made up here. Nothing is made up by any humans. Every aspect of Islam has relation to the Quran and the Sunnah. And therefore Rasulullah Sallallahu says, "Taraktu fikum amrayni ma in tamasaktum bihima lan tadillu abada." Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. I have left among you two things that if you follow them, you know, straightly, don't, don't deviate from from both of them. You are not going to astray anymore. Lan tadillu abada. It's guarantee. When you follow this two things, you are going to be on the straight path all the way. What are the two? Kitab Allah wa Sunnati, the book of Allah and my Sunnah. This is the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And every single aspect of Islamic teaching is originated from these two sources. Nothing is man-made. You know the way we pray. You can find that in the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do you do you fast? Bring that back to the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The way you do Hajj, khudu anni manasikakum. Take from me the way you do your Hajj. Everything is originated. You know from the two sources of Al Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu So that is what we call Al Islam. There is Al Aswala. There is original. Islam is original. Nothing is made up here. Nothing is man made. As you may say in that way. This is number two. Number three, that Islam is a very practical guidance. You know, sometimes when you come to certain guidance, they consider guidance, then the people are questioning how then. Let's say we say to the people, love, love is very important. But there is not a detailed explanation on how to express our love. But when Al Islam says, "Wama arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin," mercy, then Islam shows us the practical ways of how to to show our mercy. For example, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, rahmatan lil alamin is mercy to all humanity. And he exemplified that. He he practiced that. Looks like we see him doing it. How he demonstrate his mercy to all the people. Remember that blind guy on the street who used to you know to say bad things about the prophet. But he's blind. He was a blind. So one day the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by him, and he said to the prophet, "Be careful of Muhammad. He's a magician. He's a crazy. He's a liar." Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not offended. You know, he was very, he just felt sad about this man. So he came close to him and he said, What is the type of food that you, lo- you like the most? What type of food that, according to you, the delicious, the most delicious? And he mentioned to the Prophet. The Prophet Muhammad went back to his house to his wife and asked her to cook that type of food. After, after that, he brought that food to him. Not only that he brought him the food, but he fed him. He fed him because he's a blind guy. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued to do this until Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away, until he died. When he died, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Bakr replaced him as the leader of the community. And Abu Bakr wanted to continue what the Prophet used to do. This is called Sunnah. Every single thing that the Prophet did, Abu Bakr wanted to continue it, including feeding that homeless, that blind guy. So one day Abu Bakr came to him. He brought him a food, and he began to feed him. What happened? That man took his hand, and he said to him, to Abu Bakr, "Who is this?" Abu Bakr, uh, that man said, "You are different from the person who used to come before." So Abu Bakr asked him, "What happened to the man who used to come before?" He said, "He was so gentle, he was so nice, he was so soft and so kind." Imagine that a blind who used to hate the prophet, but now he witness, he witness that the prophet Muhammad sallam was so gentle, how he was so compassionate, he was so loving. The mercy of the prophet Muhammad sallam has no limit. That is the demonstration of mercy. Rasulullah show us how to be merciful, 
how to be kind to the neighbors, how to be kind to the children, how to be kind to your spouses, how to be kind to your family, how to be kind to, to, the, to your fellow Muslims and non-Muslims. This is all practical brothers and sisters. Nothing is about theories and concepts, but we have to implement it because it's practical. It's a practical. I still remember a Buddhist guy came to us. He wanted to learn Al-Islam. So I asked him, why do you want to learn Al-Islam? And this is what he answered. He said, because as a Buddhist, when I'm hungry, means spiritual hunger, not physical hunger, spiritual. When I'm hungry, I enter into my room, I close the door, I close my eyes, I did my meditation, I feel satisfied. There is a satisfaction here by doing meditation. But the moment I leave my room, I'm lost. Because I don't know what to do else. There is no regulation that what you do, this is what you need to do. You know, you're free to do. And that's what the problem is. But in Islam, Alhamdulillah, Islam is very practical. When it comes to the issue of halal wa haram, al halalu bayinun wal haramu bayinun. The halal is very clear and haram is very clear. Everything is okay to consume, to eat, except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited in the Quran. So Islam is very practical. This is what we have to know. And then Islam is easy and simple. Islam is easy and simple. Sometimes Islam has become so difficult because we make it difficult. We make it difficult. If we just follow the Quran and the Sunnah, you know, we don't have to question this and that and trying to find some other sources in order to practice our religion. It's very easy and simple. Well, the Quran and the Quran have been made easy for everybody. You know, not only to understand, but also to practice, to do it. Ad-Dinu Yusrun. Religion is easy. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So it is very easy. It is very simple. Not so complicated. Alhamdulillah. From the Iman system, when you talk about Aqil and Islam, you say, you know, one God, for example. There is only one Allah. You don't need any interpretation. Because when you say Allah one, that is an absolute one. What does it mean, absolute one? You don't have to say, okay, one in his one. One in his one is one. And you can just imagine the unique one. Qul Allahu Ahad. Not only one in terms of his existence, there's only one exist, but also in terms of his characteristic sifat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one. So he's not similar or equal to anything or anyone. It's very simple, very easy to understand. Small kid on the street, professor at Harvard University, no, equally, that there's only one God. It's so very simple. This is number, number three. The third characteristic of Islam is easy and simple. Number five, number four, that Islam is basically a rational teaching. It's about rationality. And it goes back to the knowledge again. Um, I don't mean that every single thing in Islam can, can be understood rationally. But it doesn't mean things that you don't understand rationally is not rational. So hope you understand it. It doesn't mean that things in the religion that you don't understand rationally is not rational. I give you an example. Isra Mi'raj. Your rationality is so limited to understand it. How it's happening. How the Prophet Muhammad went from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, from Masjid al-Aqsa to Sirat al-Muntaha, and then went back to al-Masjid al-Haram, you know, in just around half night. How it is possible? You know, if we are trying to force ourselves to think about that and try to understand the technicalities, how it happens, we're going to be crazy. But if you come to the issue of rationality, is it rational or not? It is rational. Why it is rational? Because Allah says, Asra bi abdihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's, he's the one who took his servant. Muhammad Sassan did not go by himself, but Allah took him. Now when you come to the issue of Allah, who is Allah for us? Allah is the one who is no limit in his power. So it is very rational. But we cannot understand it rationally because that's our limitations. 
But when you relate that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is very rational because Allah can do anything in a way that he does. He wanted to do it. So again, Islam is very rational teaching. Number six, the sixth characteristic of Islam before the last one, that Islam is balance, a tawazun. There is a balance between each aspect of Islamic teaching. When you talk about individual life to the collective life, when you talk about akhirah life and dunya life, when you talk about you know physical life and spiritual life, you know all these are balanced in Islam. Look at, for example, what Allah says in the Quran about Salatul Jum'ah in Surah Al Jum'ah. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, or you believe, idha nudiya li salati min yawmi al-jum'ah, if salat al-jum'ah is announced, okay, announced, fas'aw ila dhikrillah, then come to the remembrance of Allah, struggle to come to the remembrance of Allah. Not only come lazily, but struggle. Is'aw, sa'ya min, here, you have to struggle. It needs jihad. Because it's not easy sometimes, when you have a groceries or a store, you know, and... It's simply difficult to close your store even just one hour to go to Juma. Okay? Sometimes it's difficult, so you have to struggle for it. And that's why Allah says, Fasa'aw. You have to do sa'i or some effort to come to, to the remembrance of Allah, to the salat. But, Wadhar al Leave all things that make you busy behind. Leave all businesses. Do not busy other than salat al Juma. Don't take any other activities. Other than Salat al-Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be fully coming to the Salat, 100%. But after that, what Allah says, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَحِ But if Salat had been conducted, had been done, finished, you done it, you are done. فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Then go out, spread in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go out, leave the masjid. Don't stay and sleep in the masjid in the name of dhikrullah or in the name of ibadah by sleeping in the masjid. And they say, oh, okay, we are getting rewards because we are staying at the cup in the masjid. Now is the time for you to go out and look for the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fantashiru fil ard wa bataghu min fadlillah and look for the bounties of Allah for the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa dhikrullah and remember Allah. La'allakum tuflihun so that you may be successful. So the balance between akhirah and dunya. Between ibadat, rituals, and ibadat in the social sense. Islam is so balanced. It's a balance. And it's very important to take this as it is, that you have to be balanced in life. Because the moment we are not balanced in life, we are going to collapse. One day the Prophet Muhammad came to his daughter's house, Fatima. Radiallahu anha. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu saw her so weak, looks like she's very weak. So he asked him, ask her, the Prophet asked her, what's happened? Why are you so weak? Looks like you're so weak or are you sick? And Fatima anha, said, no, I'm so weak because last night I, I prayed that long, too long. To the point that she didn't rest that much. She was becoming weak. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said to her, la khaira fi hada. There is no goodness in this. In other words, it's not good. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi prohibited even his daughter to force herself to do ritual ibadat, to do qiyamul layl, salat al tahajjud, more than her capacity. There's a balance here. Wake up doing salat al tahajjud, but also take rest. Still remember, uh, three sahaba came to the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi asked her about the ibadat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi And Aisha Allahu Anha mentioned to them about the seriousness of the Prophet Muhammad and his ibadah. How he is so serious when he worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In his Qiyamul Layl, in his Salat. You know, when the Azan is announced, the Prophet looks like he forgot everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she mentioned to them that the Prophet is so serious in ibadah. What these three people, three Sahabat wanted to do? The first one said, no, I'm not going to sleep at night anymore. I'm going to do all the night, every night, Salat Tahajjud. The second one says, no, no, I will do fast every day. And the third one say, I don't have to marry the woman anymore. So they divided the job. One doesn't want to sleep at night. 
The second one doesn't want to eat anymore during the daytime. They fast all the day. And the third one, he didn't want to marry a woman because he considered woman as an obstacle to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came home, his wife told him about these three people. And the Prophet was so angry, angry for good. You know, Prophet was a human being, he's angry too. But when he's angry, he's angry for good. So he called these people, the three Sahabas. And he said, Antum alladhi qultum katha wa katha. Are you the people who said this and that? And they said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said to them, you know, I am praying at night, but I'm sleeping too. I do fast, but also I break my fast. In other words, at least fasting Daud, Daud fast. One day fast, the other day you break your fast. And I married the woman. I married the woman. فَمَنْ رَضِبَ عَنْ سُنَّةِ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي So whoever doesn't like my sunnah, way of life, he's not from, from among my followers. Look at the strong uh, statement from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to the people who want to destroy the balance of life. That yes, of course, we are struggling. Struggle for your akhirah. But don't forget about your nasib, your, your share here in this dunya. But not also looking for this dunya, forget the akhirah. For us, balance hasana fi dunya wa hasana fil akhirah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adabanna. That is Islam in terms of balance. So Islam is so mutawazin. Islam is so balanced. Every aspect of Islamic teaching is balanced between individual and collective life. You can individually be rich. You can be rich even just like, even like Bill Gates. It's okay. But don't forget, the more you have, the more responsibility towards your society. That's why you have to give zakat. The more you have, the more you're going to give zakat. That's what it is. There's a responsibility. Balance between individual and collective responsibility. The last characteristic of Islam that I mentioned tonight, that all aspects of Islamic teachings are connected. Connected. Cannot be separated, my brothers and sisters. We have faith, and because of that faith, we are humbling ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying five times daily. We have faith, because of that faith, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to abstain from food and drink and marital sexual relations during the time called fasting, then we don't do it. Because we have to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So iman and ibadat. But then don't forget. Iman, ibadat, then akhlaq. Human character. Human character. So it is about iman. It is about ubudiyat, rituals, ibadat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is about human behaviors, human character, al-akhlaqul karima. And if you want to squeeze, if the Islamic teaching is like, like um, coconut, let's say a coconut, and you squeeze the coconut, okay, the, bil the milk of that coconut is our akhlaq. The cheese, the cheese of Islam is akhlaq. And that's why Rasulullah is praised in the Holy Quran, not because of his salat, not because of his Qiyamul Layl, even though Qiyamul Layl is, is obligatory upon the Prophet. Muhammad must wake up every night to do Tahajjud. It's obligation on him, special. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not praise him in the Holy Quran with all those rituals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises him in the Holy Quran, Wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim. Representing, indicating the importance of akhlaq, human behavior in our religion. In fact, if you do all rituals, you pray five times daily, you do fast in Ramadan, you perform hajj even many times, but that doesn't have any social implications in your life, then you are still threatened to be bankrupt in the day of judgment. So brothers and sisters, the last characteristic of Islam is about interconnectedness between all segments of it. Do not separate it. Because if we separate the segment of Islamic teachings, that will create double standard personality. Again, double standard personality or split personality. What does it mean? So religious in the month of Ramadan, 
The moment the month of Ramadan passes, they become a different individuals. There is no Salat anymore. There is no Qiyamul Layl anymore. No reading Quran anymore. Nothing anymore. Because they say we have finished Ramadan. Allah is the Lord of Ramadan. And He is also the Lord of other months. When you go to Hajj, we are crying in front of Makkah, Al Kaaba Al Musharrafa. We cry, asking for forgiveness. But we feel that Allah is only in Makkah Al Mukarram. The moment you go back home, we feel that we are different personnel. We are different persons. That's why I call double standard. So you find someone, one person, but different personalities. Different personalities. In the masajid, so honest, so humble, so nice. When they come to the, mas to the, to the market, they are cheating. There's a different, there's a double standard personalities. Why? Because we disconnect the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between one aspect to another aspect of it. Brothers and sisters, again, my subject, inshallah, every Monday night will be about social matter. And every Wednesday night, if Allah give me a long life, I'm going to talk about some selected surahs from the Quran. And tonight we didn't talk any particular subject. Uh, we just talk about the importance of knowledge and the, important, the importance of understanding the characteristic of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and guide us always and strengthen us to learn Islam inshallah. Give us the tawfiq always to be on the straight path and pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, ease, uh, make easy for us in facing the challenge of our moment, uh, COVID-19 maybe, you know, may Allah take it away as soon as possible we can go back to our normal life. A uh, new normal is not only come back to the normal as a past, but inshallah, become new. New normal means becomes new personalities. Mentality become closer to Allah. Our mindset become more clean. Our behaviors have become better. The way we connect ourselves with our world and our life become better. That is the meaning of new normal. Not only going back to the, to the normal life, because that's, that's, that's something, it's something to happen, by the way. We're going to the, to the normal life. But hopefully, as we are going back to our normal life, we have become someone new, someone who is new. New thinking, new mindset, new horizon, new vision, new character. And I mean new is better, better one, better than before.